Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, this is uh, Nino Somraj. I am an Indian Forest Service officer. I'm a bureaucrat working in uh, one of the uh, state of India, Maharashtra. And um, at present, uh, I'm looking after the mangroves and uh, marine biodiversity in the uh, Mumbai city and Maharashtra state. So here, I would like to bring the topic on, um, it's a case study, in fact, it's a case study on mangrove uh, conservation happening around Mumbai Metropolis. And uh, before uh, going into the details of our, uh, you know, activities, I would like to introduce you, Mumbai City, to all of you. So some of you might have heard about it. So this is the capital city of Indian state of Maharashtra, and um, it's a global financial and a commercial hub. So um, the city is very, very crowded and it's very, very popular. So you can see that it's most, sixth the most populous metropolitan region in the world, having a population of uh, more than 23 million. Uh, they are living on uh, over an area of 6,500 square kilometer. So, so you understand that it's very, very uh, you know, crowded. Yeah, sometimes I can say that overcrowded city. So, so uh, I'd like to give you an, uh, you know, a, uh, introduction about, uh, I mean, the, the speciality, geographical speciality of this uh, city. Uh, so previously, uh, Mumbai was known as Bombay. And um, when uh, previously it was a group of seven islands. So when the British came uh, on our country and in the 18th century, they understood the, the commercial potential of this port city. And they reclaimed all this land in between the seven islands and uh, reshaped the into uh, the, the uh, present form. And so here on the right side, you can see biodiversity map of Mumbai city, Mumbai metropolitan region. So which was prepared by Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority in the year 2011. So, so here uh, I'm concerned about the mangroves here on the map, uh, you can see or red uh, uh, color areas. So this is the mangroves. It's uh, uh, very, very close to the uh, western coast of India, towards the coast side. And you can see so many big creeks and small creeklets. So because it's a uh, reclaimed city, the city is uh, in the first with by many creeks and creeklets, and uh, uh, it's a home to um, rich mangroves and um, associated biodiversity. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, due to the growing population, this uh, you know city faced the huge uh, migration um, uh, from the nearby villages, and um, you know the mangroves in the city really faced so many threats. So, lots of mangrove forest had been diverted uh, for development projects and for industries and for even agricultural projects. And uh, even even migrant population cut down a uh, part of mangrove forest and uh, develop the slums and uh, you know human settlement. Uh, so so unfortunately, because of all this rampant uh, illegal activities, the city witnessed uh, more than sixty percent of loss of mangrove cover in the past. Uh, but here we will know that uh, why mangroves is important and why it's very. Uh, very, very essential to be conserved for the sustainability of uh, a city like Mumbai, uh, because, uh, you know, being a coastal city, this uh, Mumbai is located on the west coast of Indian subcontinent, and um, this is uh, very much, um, and the city is facing all the threat of climate change, like sea level rise and, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, erratic weather events uh, like the tropical cyclones, etc. And uh, mangroves uh, act as a bioshield in, in uh, preventing this kind of threat and uh, helping in the city. Hence, it's, it's very, very imperative to uh, conserve this uh, mangroves in the city. And similarly, this mangroves act as a hub of biodiversity, as a home uh, to many uh, migratory water birds and uh, 
other marine organisms, invertebrates, and economically important fishes and shrimps. And uh, in Sydney, I, I, I can tell you very much that uh, this mangrove forest really uh, supporting um, to very much in the sustainable fishery industries and uh, helping in the uh, local uh, you know, income generation uh, for the uh, local people's communities. So, so uh, considering all this fact, and uh, since Mumbai witnessed the disproportionate um, uh, reduction in the uh, mangrove cover, all the government agencies, judiciaries, and um, uh, the community organizations, civil uh, society organizations joined together. And um, in the year 2005, uh, judiciary, the High Court of Mumbai, came up with a, a prohibitory order. Uh, we see that uh, you know all, all development activities, all conversions of mangrove forests and uh, it's a, a buffer zone, 50 meter buffer zones uh, we completely banned. So I consider this uh, say a uh, watershed here in the, in the conservation or in the history of conservation of uh, mangroves in Maharashtra state and particularly in Mumbai. Uh, so in order to protect uh, these mangrove forests in the city and in the state, so the state government created a special dedicated unit. So this is known as mangrove cell. And um, presently I'm working in the mangrove cell. I'm working as a deputy conservator of forest and the joint director of mangrove foundation. Uh, so our first task was to identify these mangroves uh, in the, in the, uh, on the uh, government land, on the public land. So uh, we identified such um, mangrove forests in the government ownership and brought those land under a legal protection framework. In India, it is known as reserve forest. So it, it gets the highest uh, uh, order of protection as per Indian Forest Act 1927. This was our first step. Yeah. So, uh, but then uh, after the identification and the mapping of this land, we understood that lots of encroachment happen even within the boundary of the reserve forest. And our next task was to remove all the illegal encroachment on the mangrove forest. And that's a continuing process, but uh, 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 thankfully we could um, remove, you know, almost 95% of encroachment in Mumbai city and it's more than 8,000 illegal hutments. So uh, considering the uh, industrial importance and the commercial importance and the population, uh, it's really difficult uh, task in you know, um, uh, demolishing all these uh, uh, structures and, um, uh, and protecting this land. So um, we have to do some policy also in this place. So we adopted a uh, concept of green policing in Mumbai and um, so deployed uh, uh, security forces, um, the anonymous Maharashtra security force. They have been deployed in sensitive locations which are very much prone to all diversions and uh, destructions. And uh, these police are doing all these um, uh, surveillance and on 24 by 7 basis and protecting these lands from further engagement. And our, another target was to uh, restore the, uh, you know, uh, degraded mangrove forest. And for that purpose, we initiated a uh, huge, uh, massive mangrove plantation programs and more than 735 hectares of area in this metropolitan region has been restored back in the uh, we uh, have separated mangrove nurseries in different places and uh, even so far more than 30 lakhs seedlings have been utilized in our plantation program. So uh, you can see the photographs of uh, mangrove nurseries and the mangrove plantation. Here we adopt a special technique known as fishbone channeling uh, for the restoration of the mangroves in the blank and a degraded forest area. These fishbone channels really help in in allowing it is salt water into the land, into the interior part and uh, helping uh, the, the mangrove seedlings to thrive. 
And uh, another main issue is uh, making this uh, mangrove forest more cleaner and more healthier to support more biodiversity. Uh, for that purpose, a clean mangrove campaign was initiated in uh, different parts of Mumbai Metropolis to remove all the solid waste and uh, plastic waste from the mangroves and make it more hygienic and to, and to support all this, you know, water birds and um, other organisms. And um, also for more than 8,000 tons of solar waste and the plastic waste have been removed from this forest. However, this is a continuous process. And uh, for that purpose, we, have, uh, we are in partnership with the various organizations like non-governmental organizations and civil societies to conduct this kind of programs and it's a part of our outreach programs also since uh, um, as college students and school students uh, also uh, in joining in this clean mangrove campaigns and it really helps in creating uh, an awareness about uh, keeping this mangrove area more clean. Mm. No, and, no. Uh, Can I just interrupt briefly? This is an yes. extremely interesting and very important case. Uh, but we are out of time. Uh, could you uh, slowly, or I mean, rather quickly wrap up? Um, yes, exactly. and Dr. yes. Perfect. Um, and I'll invite any questions to the chat. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're over time now. Yes. I am so sorry to do that because I was really enjoying your presentation. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. So this is my last slide only. Mm -hmm. So I can just tell about the biodiversity of Mumbai. So we have uh, a creek in the Mumbai, which is a part of the Central Asian Flyway for uh, migratory birds. And uh, to protect these lands, so we brought this land under a marine protected area. So it's known as Tani Creek Flamingo Sanctuary, which is so home to many birds like a flamingos, greater flamingos and a lesser flamingos, more than one lakh birds who migrate to this place. So this was another work on uh, conserving the biodiversity. And uh, the result was really awesome that uh, now we have more than one ten square kilometer of mangroves in Mumbai city. And this all happens due to the stringent protection and the conservation and the restorations. Yeah, thank you.